does solar work in winter? Let's find out. Alright guys, that's enough, thanks. <laughs> Can we sack the special effects team, please? Thank you. Right, I'm a little bit hot in this, so quick costume change, be back in a sec. Oh, right, that's better, okay. Does solar work in the UK in winter? That's what this video is all about. So thank you for joining me. Now this is a question that just keeps popping up. Um, it's it, with customers of mine and I've also posted a video recently um, about how my solar has performed over the last 12 months because I have solar on my house as well. But this video is going to go into the winter generation and the yields that we get from winter and how to best use your batteries, how to optimise those with the tariffs that are available um, to really get through winter and make the most from your system during the winter period. So the video I did before was about 30 minutes long. I'll put the link here. Um, if you want to go and watch that after this video, I'll also put it at the end of this video. And that's a much more detailed look at my system throughout a 12 month period. How I've used my batteries to force charge, discharge, um, you know, how I've used my tariffs, how I manage the batteries through the winter, but, um, and, and then just generally how the system's performed over a 12 month period. So now I wanted to do kind of a condensed version of that video that just focuses on how the solar performs during the winter in the UK because that like I say is a reoccurring question and a concern for people uh, and a misconception as well that people think that solar in the winter just dies off and, and it's a waste of time waste of money and it just simply isn't the case so this video is going to be full of actual facts and data that can't be denied and so was my last video and it contained all the data that i'd collected over the last 12 months and i even said in that video that these were facts and that's it you can't deny them but as you know we live in a time where people think that their opinions are more factual than facts but in actual fact Facts are facts, and that's a fact. And there's no hidden agenda here, guys. I am certainly no salesman. I'm just a mere electrician who uh, specializes in solar. And actually, my motivation for doing these videos is purely, or was, for our customers, because we get a lot of customers who ask me a lot of questions. And I thought, well, it would be really useful if I could say, look, have a little look at that video, watch that video, I explain it in great detail. So that was my motivation for doing this. I don't sell solar panels and accessories to anybody all over the country or the world. We're literally a company who are based in Teesside. We serve a 20, 30 mile radius installing solar and other electrical work. Um, I have absolutely no interest in uh, pulling the wool over anybody's eyes. I'm just someone who installs solar. I see the benefit in it because I use it myself. I've gained an awful lot of knowledge in the industry. I'm passionate about solar and I enjoy talking about it. So I think, why not share it? I wouldn't waste my time talking about something that I didn't believe in. It'd be written all over my face anyway. Um, but no, I'm doing all this for the right reasons. If you don't want to believe that solar works, scroll on. This video is not for you, that's absolutely fine. I'm not here to convince the unconvinced. I mean, there's people out there that still believe the Earth's flat, despite all of the science and, you know, live pictures beamed from satellites. Um, so, you know, <laughs> there's always gonna be people, no matter what you put in front of them, will say, it doesn't work, it's a load of rubbish, I don't believe it, blah, blah, blah. These videos are not for you, that's absolutely fine. But if you are interested in learning about solar, then keep watching and subscribe as well because there's gonna be loads and loads of information that we put out there. We do installation videos as well, but we're also gonna be doing a lot of informative videos like this one. So please don't forget to like and subscribe and without further ado, grab, 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 grab yourself a brew. Let's get into it. So I'm going to dive straight into the data um, because I'm going to try and keep this video short and sweet. It is hard to do that, believe me, when it comes to this kind of thing. There's so much to go through and I don't want to talk too fast. Um, but the last video was 30 minutes long, so I'm going to try and bring that down a little bit uh, in this one. So please bear with me, but I'm going to dive straight in the data, share my screen with you. I've selected three customers of mine who all have the same Fox system. And I did that because I'm with Fox as well. So I want to look at mine against their three as well. Because like I say, that last video I did, I had people saying that, um, you know, my data was a scam, this, that, and the other, which is crazy. Okay, so 
I've got three other customers here now and we're gonna see how are they all are faring. Okay, so here is my previous spreadsheet. Now this is a much more detailed spreadsheet um, that is all about my solar system and how my solar system performed over the last 12 months. And I broke it down um, and then went through all the export payments that I got, the best yields throughout the year, and, and even broke it into seasonal yields as well. And like I say, you can watch that video, the link again I'll put at the top there, um, if you wanna jump over to that, you can watch that. But this video is going to be much more broken down because like I say, I'm gonna try and keep it short and sweet. Um, so I've took all the data, here's my house in column one, and I've took all my data here from my other spreadsheet. And these other customers here, I have customer one, two, and three. I'm obviously not putting the names of these customers in uh, for data protection, um, but I can assure you that they're real customers. We've got these four examples. So the total array size, mine is 4.9, and then we've got customer one at 7.2, and a 4.85 system, and then a four kilowatt system. Some of these, as you will see, are spread over two roofs, whereas mine, it's only one roof. Customer one, there's a spread over two roofs, so east and west. And as you see there, 4.5 on one roof, 2.7 on the other, that's because one roof, it was gonna perform significantly better than the other. So we favored more panels on that roof than the other roof. Um, and then customer two, theirs was also split over two roofs, but this was only a small system. It was actually just on a garage roof. Um, so it's 4.85. And then customer three, this was a four kilowatt system. This was uh, 500 watt panels, eight 500 watt panels, GA solar. So a real good quality panel. Um, and then as you can see here, orientation of the roof on my, my home there is 71 degrees off south. And then you can see there, Roof one is 75 degrees negative and 105 degrees positive on both of those roofs. Uh, customer two, 54 degrees positive on the west roof and minus 126 on the other, which is again, you can see why we favored the better roof on there. So there was more panels on that side than there was on that side. And customer three only has one roof, just like mine. Four kilowatts at a 49 degree negative off south. So inverter sizes, that's important because, as you may or may not know, whatever your solar array does, your inverter can only process that amount of energy. So you might have 20 kilowatts on your roof. If you only put a 3.7 kilowatt inverter in, that's all you're ever gonna process. You'll be having losses, significant losses, if you undersize your inverter to your array. And that is what we're gonna cover again on another video, which is how to make sure that your installer is recommending the right invert size to array size, making sure that you're not gonna experience losses, which is different for everyone. If it's just on one roof that's south facing, then you wanna make sure that that inverter is close to the array size, because you may, uh, say if you had a six kilowatt array on your roof, you know, if you were all south facing, uh, any given point with perfect conditions, you may be teetering five kilowatts at any one time or, or above 5.3, something like that. You want to be making sure that you're putting in at least a five kilowatt, but you could put in a six. As long as the price difference isn't, um, you know, significantly more, which they're generally not, um, you know, you just want to make sure that you're getting the right advice. But like I said, that's not for a video today. So you can see here, 3.7, 3.7, 3.7. Uh, and it's only this customer here who had six. And as you can see, they had a 7.2 kilowatt array size. But because that's split over two roofs, they are never going to be achieving 7.2 or even close to that at any one given time. So a six kilowatt inverter is absolutely ideal. Same with this customer here, 3.7, and with mine, 3.7 is absolutely fine. I very, very rarely touch that um, because I am not on the ideal orientation. So I very rarely get close to 3.7 at any one given time. So as we look down here then, you can see yields per month since installation. So some of these customers weren't installed until that one there in August. So, um, we'll, you, you, you know, the, the main thing we want to focus on here is these periods here between sort of October and February, March. 
You know, that's that's what the, the crucial time is, what we're looking at right now. Um, and then at the bottom here, we've got total yields in August to now, which is May. We're just at the back end of May. So these figures here will be slightly higher because I'm filming this uh, I'm filming this on the 29th of May. So there's a few days left. So these figures would actually be a little bit higher uh, than what they are right there. Um, so as you can see, I've just marked here what was the best month, as you can see here, for each customer, including myself, and what was the worst month for each customer, including myself. So let's compare the two. So the best month for me was June, July for this customer. Best month for this customer here is March. We've got a 506.8 there in May. But crucially, we're looking here. We want to see the worst month. These periods are always going to be the worst. Of course they are. You know, it's winter. The sun is not up as much. We don't get as much sun. I mean, we don't even get as much in summer, do we, guys? But uh, that's another story. Uh, we could always do with more sunshine. But you can see here, crucially, that solar is working in the winter. All right, so you've got down here, best month, worst month. Best month for me in June was 613. Worst month was 231, which was January. So my solar was 37.6% as efficient in January as what it was in June. This other customer, customer one, 797 in July. That's a fantastic yield against their worst month, 270 in November. So a 33% efficiency. And then customer two, 409 in March against 150.5 in December. So a 36% efficiency. This customer here, was surprised me. Customer three with a four kilowatt system with the GA solar panels. They had five or six months as the best month in May, and then 260 in December was only their worst, which is only 51.3% as efficient as their best month. So as you can see from them figures, solar definitely performs in winter. Um, yes, it's in the majority of cases, it's less than half, but people are under the impression that it's virtually nil, that it's useless in the winter, and that is simply not the case. And please remember that these figures are purely based on the yields, which is what is generated through the panels. Obviously, there's a lot more you can do in winter, which we're gonna go into a little in this video, to maximize the potential of your solar, and that is battery storage. Battery storage is crucial um, with solar panels. Solar panels will work, you will still benefit from that, but obviously you're gonna lose the majority, you know, unless you're sat at home all day with the washing machine on, the dryer, the cooker, the kettle, everything, just using that generation as it's coming through, then it's gonna be lost to the grid. And yes, you might get some money for it, great, but what you wanna do you want to keep it and use it yourself. Um, and that's even more important in winter because the sun is out less. So when it is out, you want to grab onto that energy and keep hold of it to use yourself. And you can also use your batteries by charging them through the night on cheap tariffs and then even discharging them at the end of the day if you wish. Um, perhaps in winter, you wouldn't want to do that as much, but in the summer, discharge away, that's what we're doing. But as you can see, purely from the yields alone, just from what is generated through the panels, you can see that the panels themselves carry on working all through the winter. And despite the fact that we have some horrific weather in this country, we are still seeing good results. Them results are more than acceptable. So we're gonna look at a couple of months in particular. We chose August and February, which we'll just say is the middle of summer. February is the middle of winter. We could look at all of these differently. Um, and also in my last spreadsheet, I went into significant detail um, looking at the exact dates and breaking the seasons down. I'm not gonna do that for, for all these customers as well because I'd be here all day and my wife does like to see me as well, I think. So I've just chose August and February, which I think is a reasonable example. Um, so August for me there is 459 and uh, February 333. So two very different times of the year. And as you can see, the percentage difference is only 72.6 between those periods. February is 90% as efficient as August for this particular customer and 80% uh, there and 74% for this customer. Um, but clearly we're not looking here 
at the best month, worst month, because everyone will have different orientation, different pitch roofs, um, and some have got their arrays spread over two roofs, like in this, these examples, some have just one. So as you can see there, there's quite a difference between the four examples here of what is the best month. Um, we've got June for me, July, customer one, March for customer two, and May for customer three. And like I say, May's not even finished yet this year. But as I say, these customers still have June and July to go through this year. So as you can see here, our worst months are pretty consistent really. So that's quite a basic spreadsheet that I've put together there. It's not going into vast detail, but it's enough to see that the solar panels are still efficient in winter. Um, and now I've provided four different examples there. That is all real data. What we're not looking at here is the battery storage because it's irrelevant. All I'm looking at is how do the solar panels perform? Because many people may think that solar panels are useless in the winter and it's just not the case at all. Um, as you can see from my data there. The people who you know haven't got solar yet or are interested in solar and who, who maybe think that solar does not perform in the winter. So that's what this video is all about. Just showing you that actually it does and it can perform very well. But I touched earlier on battery storage. So I'm gonna go into battery storage in much more detail in other videos and how much battery storage you should get. You know, that's what customers are always unsure about. How much do I commit to initially and I always say to customers I think that what you should do is because battery storage is a significant part of a solar system cost um, so it's always a difficult balance to get right you want to get enough battery storage because you want to capitalize on that generation that you're getting you don't really want to be sending it all back to the grid even though you are getting paid for it you want to be holding on to it as well and then potentially even discharging it there's so much you can do with the batteries to make them work hard for you and save you some real money but it's hard to know how much to get. So I'm gonna go into that in more detail down the line in other videos. But for the purpose of this video, it's important to mention battery storage because this is all about how does solar perform in the UK. I've proven that the panels work during winter, but in order to capitalize on your solar system, battery storage really is essential because especially in winter when the sun's not out as much, you're holding onto that generation to use later on in the night the next morning um, but you can also during the winter when the sun's not out as much make use of those cheap evening tariffs such as octopus i'm with octopus flux customers with evs can be with octopus go uh, for your import and then you also get paid for your export um, i do have an octopus referral link in this description below if you wish you could get 50 pound in your account um, to start you off but uh, octopus is definitely the best tariff provider for solar and EV and batteries. So thank you again so much for watching. Um, I hope you got something from that. And like I said, we do have installation videos as well if you'd like to watch those, which will appear at the end of this video. Um, but if you are more interested in the solar sessions and this informative side of the channel, then you will also see that category pop up at the end of this video. And you can also go to our dashboard where I've categorized everything. So we've got installation videos and then we've got just the solar session videos as well. So you can and just look through those but thank you so much for watching and please keep your comments coming i love replying to comments um, and helping people and uh, advising uh, i really thoroughly enjoy it especially over a nice bottle of wine it gives me something to do at night so yeah thank you again for watching please do like and subscribe i've been andy from alps electrical we'll see you next time